And unfortunately, this one's very rare and expensive European bumper on the front has been damaged. But uh, you can see this one's looking a little worse for the wear in the engine compartment. Um, but you can see the velour interior just kind of dirty and worn. So this is a 1977 model, 450 SEL 6.9, and the one next to it is a 1979, but uh, anyhow, this is one we call, affectionately call the brown turd, and uh, this one's a little rougher of the two. Both these cars I got out of Texas via Virginia from a friend of mine, and uh, they have been sitting since, I want to say like late 80s, early 90s. You can see this one has a 1990 Louisiana inspection sticker on it. Um, I've got the titles on them that are dated from the 80s, which is pretty exciting. But they sat in a warehouse in Texas for a very long time and just recently were rediscovered, I guess you could say, barn finds. I'm trying to decide what to do with them, but this one should originally be a pea green. Hopefully we'll pop the hood and you can kind of see that. But if you check out the interior, kind of the cool thing about these European cars is they're both equipped with velour interior. A very distinctive smell and a very distinctive feel. Uh, this was actually very popular in Europe and uh, specifically Japan because they consider leather to be noisy. And the velour is much better with temperature, whether it's hot or cold. You can see this one has, uh, I forget what it's called. Uh, in German, they have a cool nickname for it, but basically it means gooseneck. It's an old uh, Blaupunkt control for your radio. A neat thing of the uh, European 6.9s is they did not all come with the automatic climate control like they did here in the States. So you get nice, simple manual controls instead of the crazy vacuum actuated US one. This one is a little less uh, specced than the other one. It uh, does not have a sunroof, but it does have cruise control. You can see it is in German there. It did get some federalization when it came to the U.S. You can see it does have U.S. headlights, but it did keep its European bumpers. And we do get a uh, U.S. cluster here, so that has been swapped. Kind of unfortunately, the European clusters are a little different, so it would have been neat. But uh, nothing that can't be switched back. See, it has 94,000 miles in change. And it's actually in pretty decent shape, especially the interior. Let's see if we can get you a shot of the original paint color here somewhere. See, it is on its sweet original 14 inch wheels. So these are about as original as it gets. And um, maybe cameraman can get right in there. You can see the green there on the bottom of the hood, but kind of a pea green, which um, I'm sure back in the day was pretty atrocious. But uh, you can see this one's looking a little worse for the wear in the engine compartment. Um, I'm told this engine would not spin over but I have not confirmed that myself. I haven't really done anything with these two cars since we got them and unloaded them off the trailer, but everything is generally here. So it is a nice basis. Um, I know it may look like it's hydraulic suspension is working, but uh, they are on wood blocks. So uh, that will be a challenge, but nothing I'm not familiar with from dealing with my 6.9. You can see the hydraulic suspension reservoir there. Kind of the neat thing about the Euro cars is uh, they don't have like any of the emissions controls. So no EGR, no air injection. And then uh, they have an extra point of compression in the 6.9 M100 motor. So a little more power on these. And you also get the oil cooler instead of the EVAP controls. So super neat to have the European cars. The brown paint's in pretty decent shape. So it's a decent repaint. You can see our seals are not, not really sealing anymore. And we've got some bubbles in the paint like right here, but I don't know, the thought process may be to return this one to its uh, atrocious pea green, but because the body's nice and straight. Both of these cars, I would say, are savable, though I do prefer this one. So this is the 1979 model. This is the anthracite car, one of my favorite colors from Mercedes-Benz. Also, with the nice, sweet velour interior, you can see this one is... Uh, Got a few spots that could use some attention. Uh, it just seems to have a bit more wear. This one does have its European cluster. So there's your European cluster and uh, has a proper 116 part number. See, it does have 160,000 kilometers or so. So that's right around 100,000 miles. So neither of them have a crazy amount of miles. 
Again, nice period correct radio. You know, the wood grain's in pretty decent shape. These lower ones could use redone, but the rest of it's in pretty decent shape. Ooh, what do we have here? Oops. Oh, look at that. It's your old key. That's like the extra, see, reserve key. That's pretty exciting to see that. See, this was your original hang tag on your cruise control. It tells you how to use it. In German, it's Tempomat. What else do we have here? Directory of diesel fuel stations and authorized dealers. That's pretty neat. Like I said, I have not really looked at these cars all that closely. It's funny that it's just for diesel fuel and this is a very, very thirsty gas motor at about eight miles to the gallon. Oh, check that out. It's in French. It's even got its model code stamped in there. Mercedes-Benz of Canada. That's pretty neat. So maybe this car was originally in Canada. That is a good possibility. It is getting quite toasty in here on this May afternoon. But you can see this one has a sunroof, which is super nice. Mine personally has a sunroof, and I like that quite a lot. The other one has the rear speaker package, so this one would just have the front speakers. But this one, if we go under the hood, I believe the first car to have ABS was the 116 chassis. And there you can see the big old Bosch ABS monster there. And I am told this engine runs, at least on starting fluid. As uh, we may have talked about in other videos, the K-Jet or K-Jetronic or Crabhead or many of the nicknames that it has is uh, notoriously difficult to uh, keep going, especially when they sit like this and, you know, 30 years sitting stationary is not good, especially if fuel is left in them, which, like I said, not sure if there is. Got the fan and everything off this one, which uh, I don't believe I have. And uh, I think that was just because they were trying to spin the motor by hand. But like I said, it evidently runs on starting fluid. These are the dry sump 6.9. Like I said, I'm not going to get too deep into it because I know we've talked about that in other videos. But this is your oil dipstick on the passenger fender. It does have oil. It's a little low. But, and unfortunately, this one's very rare and expensive European bumper on the front has been damaged. But uh, thankfully we have an extra one over there. So uh, not really sure how we're going to do this with these cars. If we're going to save one or the other, use one as a parts car. Or... Not sure. You tell us what you think, what you'd like to see. And uh, I would like to see these on the road again. More so for me, I want to see what a European 6.9 is like. As I'm told, it is a huge difference, even though on paper it's about like 36 horsepower and... I think around 40 or 50 pound-feet of torque, which is nothing to shake a stick at, but um, oh, that door's stuck a little. You see you got your nice long wheelbase. The cargo nets are not sagging, which is pretty amazing. But you can see the velour interior just kind of dirty and worn more so than in the green car. So kind of get a balance of both. The body on this one's better for sure, and uh, the color combination is arguably better. So the brown car has a little bit more, uh, some rust spots. I mean, it's not bad by any means. Um, help us decide what you'd like to see with these cars. Would you like to see one or the other restored? I mean, I'd at least like to see both of them run and see if the suspensions will do anything, but uh, that will be a project for another day. And uh, hopefully the underneaths aren't too bad. But uh, like I said, put down below what you wanna see. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next video with these two European 6.9s.